welcome to another of Mrs. Patnell's Maths Lessons. This week our focus is upon one lesson today on positional language and then for the rest of the week we are looking at shape and 3D shape in particular. Uh, we're going to start today's lesson with number of the day. So if you've got your sheets or your pieces of paper then I want you to ha um, have a go at 25. And you can all do 25 today if you give it a go. So you're writing the number putting it in tallies, groups of five, with number five being across like a garden gate, remember? 25 dots, you can group them however you like, and then think of two numbers you can add together to make 25. I have suggested that maybe you change your math symbol to a subtraction symbol if you want to, and think about what two numbers you could have that when you subtract, when you take away one from the other, you end up with 25. And here, this is your 25 circle, what two numbers can you put together to make 25? You've got two parts, what can they come together to make the 25, which is your whole number? So your part, part, whole model, okay? So that's your number of the day, 25. Let's start today's lesson by doing a bit of counting. We're going to count backwards today because that does help with our subtraction. So we're going to count backwards from 20 all the way to zero. So when you're ready, we're going to start at 20. And 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one and zero on the end. Excellent counting backwards. Don't forget to have your 100 square handy if you manage to print one off because mine can't always be seen so clearly. Uh, I think we're going to count in fives now to 115. So we can still use our 100 square even when we reach 100. We're going to then go back and use the same numbers again but just remember to say 100 and before we say it so 100 square can help us even when we're moving past 100 right Ted I'm going to put you here so you're safe there we don't want this column because when we're counting in fives remember we're just interested in the ones that end in a five and the ones that end in a zero are you ready let's do a funky tune remember five 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 105, 110, 115, Lovely counting in fives. Well done. Pat on the back to you guys. Now I think we're just going to do our bonds of ten chant so we don't forget those really important bonds to ten. You will use those for the rest of your maths education going on all until you're really older. So it's so important to know your bonds to ten. Some of you, some of my friends at home have been doing some very clever things with Play-Doh and matching their bonds to ten up which is a nice idea to do after the lessons. That was really good. So, bonds to ten chant, let's start with zero and ten. So zero and ten are big strong men. One and nine get along just fine. Two and eight are always late. Three and seven don't make eleven. Four and six are in the mix. Five and five like to jump and jive. Excellent if you remember those and which ones go with which numbers to add up to make ten. Right, so this week, uh, this lesson as promised is positional language. So we're looking at things like um, above and underneath and next to. So this is our focus of today's lesson. Now if you're in my class, then I've sent an email to you guys um, on the Sunday evening to give some extra uh, worksheets to go with this lesson to secure your positional language. If you're doing this at home and you're not in my class then don't worry there's lots on the internet that you'll be able to find that will give you some extra uh, worksheets to go with us to make sure that today's lesson has definitely worked. If not you could probably do lots of tasks around the home where your adult just says right I've hidden Teddy, 
ask me some questions about where he might be and then go and find him. Okay, so that'd be a good thing to do after this lesson. Ted Ted is going to help me out today. He is my model, shall we say. Uh, but to start off our positional language, we're going to sing a little song together, which I have here on my laptop, which is called Put Your Bean Bag. And this is um, a positional language song. Okay, so I'm going to play it. And I have my bean bag here, shaped like a little frog. And as we sing the song, it will have positional language in it, and we have to do that with the bean bag, okay, while we're singing. Some of them might be under the table, in which case I might have to whiz the camera under quickly. We shall see. So let's work on our positional language by singing a song. Put your bean bag in your hand, in your hand. Put your bean bag in your hand, in your hand. Put your bean bag in your hand for the song that we have planned. Put your bean bag in your hand, in your hand. Next verse. On your head. Put your bean bag on your head, on your head. Put your bean bag on your head, on your head. Put your bean bag on your head. Don't forget, look straight ahead. Put your bean bag on your head, on your head. What's next? Next to you. Put your bean bag next to you, next to you. Put your bean bag next to you, next to you. Put your bean bag next to you. Get your friend to do it too. Put your bean bag next to you, next to you. Oh, underneath. Put your bean bag underneath, underneath. Gonna put it under my chair. Put your bean bag underneath, underneath. Put your bean bag underneath, and then what's beneath. Put your bean bag underneath, underneath. Right, what's next? Up above. Your bean bag up above, up above. It's up here. Put your bean bag up above, up above. Put your bean bag up above. Singing songs is what we love. Put your bean bag up above, up above. What is next? Oh, down below. Bean bag down below, down below. Put your bean bag down below, down below. Put your bean bag down below. Can it really touch your toe? Put your bean bag down below, down below. <sighs> Whew. That was quite a busy little positional language song there, wasn't it? Hey? Right, Mr. Bean Bag, let's pop you down over there and let's fold up the laptop. So. Positional language. Now we've had our song, we've spoken about it. I'm just going to straighten the camera. <clears throat> a bit wonky. Okay. So, we have spoken about positional language in that song, but I want to look into it a little bit more. So, Teddy is going to be here to help me. Now, Teddy, I'm going to put him in certain places and I want you to call out to the camera and describe where I have put Teddy, okay? So sometimes it might be uh, in relation to the piece of furniture that he's on, okay? And sometimes it might be to do with, um, I've got some coloured teddies here as well, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm doing when I put him there. So, I am going to put Teddy here. How would you describe Teddy if you think about where the table is? So use the table in your sentence. How would you describe Teddy's positional language to do with the table? He is above the table. Can you see? He's above it. He's not sitting on it. There's a gap in between. So he's above the table. He's also above the chair. He is also above, I don't know if you can see it here, the bean bag. Okay, so he's above. Excellent positional language there. Now I'm going to put Teddy, hmm, here I'm going to put him here now. Okay, so there's Teddy. Think about the table again in this sentence. How would you describe Teddy's positional language to do with the table? What would you say? You could say that Teddy is on the table. He is actually placed on it. He's not hovering above it. He is on the table. My pen is also on the table. Okay, so that's some more positional language for you. Now, I'm going to have to move the camera a little bit now so you can see. But where is Teddy now? Let, hang on, let me just move him. In relation to the table, if you use the table in your positional language sentence, what would you say was Teddy's positional language to do with the table? Call it out to the screen. He is underneath 
or just under would be fine or underneath the table is where Teddy is right now okay let's pull this back up again so where shall I put Teddy next hmm so Teddy this time I'm going to put you hmm I'm gonna bring in my colour teddies so I've got my green colour teddy here and I'm gonna place that there by the table there and I'm gonna put Teddy here be very careful not to say the positional language when I put him down. How would you describe Teddy using positional language to, to do with green Teddy? So let's call him Ted Ted because that's his name. So how would you describe where Ted Ted is in relation to our green Teddy? If you used green Teddy in your sentence, call it out to the screen. You could say that Ted Ted was behind the green teddy he is behind him okay so Ted Ted is behind right what about if I move the color teddy let's push Ted Ted forwards green teddy and you're not going to see him very well but I'm going to put him here there he is just put him there be careful not to say the language again how would you describe Ted Ted now compared to green teddy here he is back here how would you describe Ted Ted now in relation to the green Teddy who's back here? Call it out to the screen. You could say that Ted Ted was in front of the green Teddy because his green Teddy behind him. So Ted Ted is in front of the green Teddy. Fantastic if you've got that right. Hmm, now what about if I put a coloured teddy this side and a coloured teddy this side. How could you describe Ted Ted's positional language now? How could you describe him using positional language in relation to the two coloured teddies? What could you say now? Call it out to the screen. You could say that Ted Ted is in between the coloured teddies okay so there's one on each side of him so he's sitting in the middle of them which you could say but he's also in between the two coloured teddies um let's try just one teddy here let's put mr yellow teddy back there so here's ted ted imagine he's sitting on a bus and here's green teddy here how could you describe ted ted now he's not behind the teddy anymore and he's certainly not in front of the teddy and he's not in between because there's not another one on this side. So how would you describe Ted Ted using positional language now compared to or relating to the green Teddy? You could say that Ted Ted is next to the green Teddy. He's next to him. There he is. He's sitting side by side. He is next to the green Teddy. What about if I use my box now? sorry green teddy let's put you over there so here's my box what about if ted ted is there okay there is ted ted how could i describe ted ted using positional language now in relation to the box what could i say call it out to the screen what could you say should i say you could say that ted ted is in the box he is in the box there he is, I've put him inside, so he is in the box. There we are. Now if I put him out here now, there was a couple of things you could probably say using positional language about Ted Ted. What could you say? See so if you can think of one, maybe you can think of two. So you could say that Ted Ted, because he was in the box and now I've done this with him, you could say that Ted Ted is outside of the box. So that could be one thing you could say. Or yet again, you could say he is next to the box couldn't you because there he is to the side of it he is next to the box so that's some more positional language you could have said on there right so i think that probably that is a, a good bit of positional language today because i have set as i say some worksheets for those children in my class to problem solve with positional language and to do some cutting and sticking with it but as i say you will be able to find stuff online or you could get your um, adult in your house to hide Teddy and you have to ask questions using positional language like is Teddy next to a book is Teddy under a table 
and then you could go and try and find him when you get your when your adult has answered yes to lots of those questions. I will just, before we go, as a stretch task, sit Teddy here. And I'm going to put this Teddy here. So my yellow Teddy is here. My red Teddy is here. My green Teddy, and you're not gonna be able to see him on the camera, but you can see I'm putting him here. I don't wanna use my positional language because it will, uh, it will take the job away from you. And maybe I'll even do this with Ted as well. So could you think of at least three sentences, and there are some more, but at least three sentences that you could use positional language to describe where Ted Ted is right now. So green Teddy is back here. Yellow Teddy is here. And red Teddy is here. So that's your stretch task. See if you can have a go when this video finishes to so think of a few sentences to describe Ted Ted's positional language. Uh, don't forget to do those worksheets if you're in my class. And I will see you tomorrow when we talk more about 3D shape. See you then. Bye-bye.